Um, so you teach math at Muskegon Community College in Michigan. Correct. You have both online and 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 live classes. I guess you can call them live classes. Face to face classes. Face to face. Okay, in the flesh. Uh, and you use Wolfram Alpha across all of your all of your classes. Yes, I do. If we're teaching something like algebra, what do we do if Wolfram Alpha does all the algebra? And mm -hmm. Um, it's particularly problematic when you're teaching online students because uh, you're, you're not there to supervise their use of a tool and you're not sure exactly how they're going to be using it on their own. You hope that they'll be using it to check their answers, to make sure that they understand the process, to make connections between the algebra and the graphs, for example, but you aren't there to monitor that and you don't <laughs> know. So it's made a lot of us who teach online a little bit nervous. Mm -hmm. um, what we teach at the community college level, which is where I teach, is basically algebra through about differential equations, and most of that can be done um, in some context with Wolfram Alpha. So the more we move towards doing like application problems and problems that require very conceptual level thought, the less of it that Wolfram Alpha will just do for the students. But I think that there's great value in using something like Wolfram Alpha to help them make the connections between graphs and algebra and different types of mathematics that they might not otherwise bring into class. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so the way you've, you've tackled with this issue of now that Wolfram Alpha shows all the steps and does all the work and the added layer of you can't look over their shoulder, like you said, supervise the use of the tools, uh, the best approach is almost a curricular change to uh, more conceptual uh, approaches. What are, what are some of the conceptual approaches that you've now used in the classroom to kind of overcome this, this built-in hurdle? Well, some of them we've been pushing in education for a while. There's been a movement for reform calculus, for example, which uses a lot of very conceptual ideas, like looking at finding derivatives using um, tables of values and by finding slopes on graphs rather than just, here's a function, what's its derivative? Because mm -hmm. today, here's a function, what's its derivative? That can be done by Mathematica in. or Wolfram Alpha or any of these mm -hmm. tools. So is that really what we should be teaching or should we be teaching the deeper level thought? So there has been a movement for a while to move towards these kinds of ideas, but it's difficult to budge mathematics. And mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of inertia to keep doing things the way we've done them, especially since that's how most of us learned the subject. Yeah. So that's what I'm hoping... That's what you're most comfortable, most comfortable with. Right. You know? So what I'm hoping Wolfram Alpha will do is provide a little bit of a push that will help instructors to start to make that shift. Well, if Wolfram Alpha is there and it's available on every computer where there's internet access, so my students have it at home, they have it in the the computer commons on campuses, mm -hmm. maybe on I need devices. to be on their mobile devices, <laughs> maybe I need to be assigning different types of problems. So I'm hoping that it will help push um, education and mathematics, particularly towards more concept-oriented questions. Now, you mentioned that there's an inertia when you actually try to put the proof of concept of this reform idea into actual practice. What's, what's that experience been like, actually trying to put it into practice? How have you gone about you know, putting that first step forward? It's much easier to do on an individual level. Mm -hmm. um, but, and uh, like the class level or with your, at the student level, what do you mean by individual? Um, a lot of it is oriented towards textbooks. So okay. we have what are called reform textbooks and traditional textbooks at all this different levels. This is sounding very religious. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is a little bit. <laughs> if, you, if you talk to a group of mathematicians about this, I'm sure it'll, it'll start to seem like a religious experience to you pretty so quick. So the, the individual level, that's, uh, so what's that individual level approach mean? What's that like? Okay, so for example, if you look at the idea of taking derivatives, which maybe, I don't know whether you remember this or not, but okay. Just we'll, we'll pretend you. We'll pretend you do. Okay, good. Um, so <laughs> one approach to um, to doing derivative problems is to teach students a lot of algorithms for solving problems, okay. and have them practice with that and only that. Um, another approach that you can take to um, derivatives is to do that, but also have them um, take derivatives and, and apply algorithms in a more general sense. So instead of saying y equals Si x sine x, what's the derivative? You say y equals x times f of x, some unknown function. Okay. And you give them a table of values, like, well, what's the, uh, the value of f at these values? What's the value of f prime at these values? And then they have to go through and, and do the problem with using just the general functions, no actual oh. formulas, which it's, it's almost like you remove their cr their, this crutch they've been leaning on oh, for okay. a long time, that the, they, they can the memorize algorithms. a rule and just... Um, carry it out, but okay. to do this other to do it this other way in this general sense, they actually have to understand the concept behind the algorithm and not what the algorithm is so much as, okay, if this is a particular rule, how do I carry it out in this new situation, a situation I've never been confronted with before? And it's interesting to take students who have always been very successful at doing this kind of here's the problem, what's the solution, here's the yeah. problem, what's the solution, and you throw them in this other environment where the problems are very general 
and they have to use notation and, and words to express you know, what the answer would be, look on a graph to find the slope instead of just plugging it into their calculator to find the slope. Mm -hmm. And you start to see some very interesting misconceptions <laughs> come out about what they're actually thinking in their, in their minds. So that would be an example of a difference between kind of a traditional problem mm -hmm. and a ref more of a reform problem. So when, um, w when you give them a, a reform problem that has this unknown function, is that when they use a tool like Wolfram Alpha to, to plug no, things No, actually, in? that would be an example of something they could not use Wolfram Alpha for. So you forbid them from using... No, it's not that, they, that I've forbidden it. Oh, oh but, but there's it no way do that the it problem. locks them out. Okay. Right, it won't, it, because they're, they're looking at a table of values to find the answers instead of like the function. Uh, okay. It's not something that they can just type into any program and do. They, they have to rely 100% on themselves to do the problem. And they want to know, how, but how do I get an A? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so when you say individual level, this is good. You know, we're teasing out the issue. You're not talking about just changing the class curric curriculum. You're talking about looking at individual concepts and changing yes. the way that the, the approach to teaching those concepts has been done. So it's not just at the class level. It's like look at everything you teach Correct. and then completely rewire how you do that. Correct, and, and that's what I was step. talking about with inertia, yeah. that it's really difficult to push process. an entire profession into thinking about what is it that's really important in math, I mean, what is it that we teach very specific rules? Mm -hmm. Is it important that students know um, eight different methods of factoring and all the different exponent rules and 12 different rules for taking a derivative? Or is it important that they learn how to think logically and that they learn how to think um, creatively. How to, creatively and to make connections between different concepts and say, oh, wait, I see these rules for logarithms, they're very similar to these rules for exponents. They're mm. just structured as an inverse to each other. Um, and how do you push towards that kind of thinking mm -hmm. um, with curriculum constraints and, and all sorts of other pressures on mathematics? I think we've become a, a, a group of people who, who tries to just keep up. We have all these yeah. disciplines that are telling us what to teach, yeah. and we just try to comply as best we can. But maybe, maybe this will be a tool that helps us push for some real Well, um, we certainly change. hope so. And, and uh, I, can, I can see how... That's when the, oh, well, I learned all 12 functions of, of how to you know, do that derivative. That's where the kind of old guard, um, I don't want to say it gets in the way, but that's where it becomes uh, a factor. Well, it's not even so much old guard as it is that we tend to teach how we learned. It's mm. what we know, and we know it worked. So if we experienced it that way, I mean, you went through your educational process, and you learned in a particular way. Yep. And now if somebody walked in and said to you that you need to teach in a, in a completely <laughs> different wrong. way, you would say, but wait, I know this works. I learned it this yeah. way. And look at me. And, yeah, and look at me. <laughs> I'm teaching now. And, and it was interesting because I was having a conversation with somebody yesterday, and I, we were talking about slide rules, for example, okay. a tool that came in and changed the way we teach yep. a particular topic in math, somewhat, something like Wolfram Alpha could do. And we're saying, well, you know, did students understand logarithms better when they were doing it manually on a slide rule? Okay. And, and some would argue that they did understand the, 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 um, some of the minutiae of logarithms better that way. Mm -hmm. and, and so we're saying, well, if you gave the tests that you gave back then to students now, how would they fare? And I said, but that's not really fair. You would also have to give the tests we give today mm -hmm. to those students back then because we are able to teach different kinds of concepts with things like graphing calculators and, yeah. and programs like Wolfram Alpha or Mathematica mm -hmm. than we were able to do. 20 years ago. We could use it as a tool for exploration, much okay. easier. And, and, and similarly, we could use tools like Mathematica for exploration, but if we lack computer lab space and things like that. Wolfram um, Alpha is free Wolf resource Alpha's for everyone. free resource for everybody, so it's, it's a lot easier for us to just say, hey, I can incorporate this tomorrow. I don't have to fill out a bunch of forms. I don't have yep. to go to my administration and, and beg for extra funds. I don't have to build new computer labs or anything like that. It's just available for us So many for teachers are in that situation. Yeah. So we're, we're kind of exploring that. All right, thank you so much, Maria.